Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Jamaican food with me. What's good, y'all? And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about baptism. Yes. You wanna tell them about your experience yesterday? Yes, so, um, yesterday I went to a little mountain and when I first got there, Coach said, you know, the, the, like, the mountain was like water, it was like drinking water, right? It was like, it was like spring water, right? So I didn't believe him at first, right? Until I saw like, something coming out of the water it was like it was like it's not really steam i don't know how to say i forgot what it's on mist. but yeah mist my fault it's mist right so i was saying like is the water cold and he said yes so he asked me do you want to get baptized and i said yes because i've never been baptized before so i said yes and i went in the water and he baptized me it was pretty it was, the water was very cold very very cold uh, it was like it was, it was in the winter or something. Uh, very cold. It was very weird because I'd never been baptized before. Right. But, you know, yeah, was, yeah, I got baptized, so I'm happy. All right. And in this video, what we're going to do is try to explain what this all means. What did that mean? It's more than just getting wet. Facts. Right. So our text today will be coming out of the Dachi or what they call the teachings of the apostles. And then we'll be looking in the epistle of Barnabas as we talk about what the baptism means to you. All right, now, first of all, we're gonna look here in Dadachi chapter seven, so we can understand why it is we did some of the things we did yesterday. You, you wanna take a shot at reading the verse? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. Go ahead, just take your time. And let's start right there at chapter seven, verse one. But concerning baptism, thus shall ye baptize. So this is telling us what we must do, how you're supposed to do it, okay? Having first recited all these things, baptize in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in living, running water. Yeah, so that's what we did. That's why we was down in the mountain spring, because that's living, running water, opposed to like a swimming pool or a bat, you know, a... A tub or something like that you know that's what it's talking about the spring there and then notice that it says to baptize in the name of the Father, the son and the holy spirit which we went through all of that but then look at this first part where it says first recited all of these okay and what it's talking about is what we learned back up here in this epistle or these teachings of the apostles all right but so let's get back into the baptism part Verse 3. But if thou hast not living water, then baptize in other water. Yeah, so this is going on to say the mountain spring wasn't necessary. But it was the best we could do. That's why we took that opportunity to, to do it. That's why it was such a spare the moment thing. Because it's telling you the best water to use. And it says, okay, if you can't find a mountain spring in the hills of West Virginia, you know, use some other water. Matter of fact, read verse 4. And if thou art not able in cold, then in warm. Yeah, so you can do cold, cold or warm. warm. So the important thing here is to be baptized. Okay. Mm -hmm. But before the baptism, let him that baptizeth and him that is baptized fast and any others also who are able. Yeah. And so this fast doesn't necessarily have anything to do with food. It's talking about doing charitable deeds and praying and, and that kind of thing, like you would read in Isaiah chapter 58. Okay, so what this is saying is before you get baptized to kind of do good, to do, you know, do good deeds and, and, and to clean. pray. Yes, you know, well, the baptism is what cleanses you. You can't get clean without the baptism. You know, don't don't get fooled thinking that you can somehow clean yourself before the baptism. No, what it's just saying is to, you know, just do something good ahead of time. The one who baptizes and the bap one that's getting baptized. Okay. Then let's go on to the last verse. And thou shalt order him that is baptized to fast a day or two before. Yeah. So if we had to have more planning, we wouldn't have went through all of these steps. And that's kind of what we're doing here, showing you what all you actually missed since we did a kind of impromptu thing. In other words, you may have to do it again. Yay. Well, 
not so fast. This baptism will have been effect. This will count as your first baptism, even though you didn't do it correctly. And I, I use my own testimony as an example because I never went through any of this stuff they're talking about either. The first time I got baptized, they basically just told me to show up Sunday morning, and I did, and they threw me in some water. <laughs> so, wow. So then that's what we're that's why we're going through all of this so that you don't have to learn the hard way like I did. You can at least know what's going on here. All right. So let's go on to the next part where we actually start talking about the purpose of it. And this is going to come out of the epistle of Barnabas. Okay. This is one of the uh, two books that was taken out of the New Testament of the Bible. Okay. You, you're familiar with the New Testament, yeah. how it's split into two books. Yeah. Well, the number of books was reduced in history um, as you can imagine that's why they're only 66 now well in the New Testament there was two additional books in the New Testament the Shepherd of Hermes is one which is a very important book and then you have this one too which is also an extremely important book called the Epistle of Barnabas the, 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 what they have in common is an explanation of the temple and what it takes to dwell in that what we call the third temple so by removing those books, it kind of leaves us blind to the third temple. But we'll talk about that in another video. We're going to drop all the way down here to about chapter 16. Now, so let's drop down to verse uh, 1 in chapter 16, if you would. Do that. Moreover, I will tell you likewise concerning the temple, how these wretched men being led astray set their hope on the building and not on their God that made them as b being a house of God. So now that's what this book is about, mostly about the third temple. And we're not going to cover all of the book, obviously, but we're getting down in here when it's talking specifically about the temple because of its relationship to baptism. We're going to find out. Matter of fact, would you go ahead and read verse two? For like the Gentiles, almost they consecrated him in the temple. But what saith the Lord, abolishing the temple? Learn ye, who hath measured the heaven with a span, or hath measured the earth with his hand. Have not I, sa saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool of my feet? What manner of house will ye build for me? Or what shall be my resting place? Ye perceive that their hope is in vain. So this is talking about the third temple. There, there are many people around the world who are actually not only anticipating, but are investing a lot of resources in the construction of a brick and mortar temple as if our father in heaven, hallowed be his name, the almighty, the creator, is actually going to come and live in their house that they're going to build for him. That makes sense? Yeah. They're, they're going to actually build a house to put him in? Damn. They're going to build a house for God. In other words, it's like, you ever talk to anybody about scripture and they say, well, save that for church. You could take that to church. Don't say. Yeah. So that's the kind of the idea behind this temple is that now they're going to house God in this place way over yonder somewhere. Wow. Yeah. So that's what he's, that's why he's being so hard on him saying, you guys are doing this in vain. It's ridiculous. It's never going to work. But anyway, let's go on to verse three. Furthermore, he saith again, behold, they that pulled down this temple themselves shall build it. Yeah. So those who tore down the temple will be those who is actually going to build it. This is kind of that Amos kind of stuff. You read the book of Amos and it starts talking about how our father is strategically putting people in certain positions to do certain things, you know, even against their free will almost. Well, this is kind of what it's talking about, how the people who tore down the temple in the past will be back again in order to build this last temple. All right, let's go on. So it cometh to pass... For because they went to war, it was pulled down by their enemies. Now also the very servants of their enemies shall build it up. Yeah. So this is kind of prophetic in those, you know, that will be responsible for putting it back are the same ones that tore it down. Again, it was revealed how the city and the temple and the people of Israel should be betrayed. For the scripture saith, and it shall be in the last days that the Lord shall deliver up the sheep of the pasture and the fold and the tower thereof to destruction. 
and it came to pass as the Lord spake. Likewise, so this is, you know, why all of this went down in Jerusalem is what it's talking about here. But go ahead. I'm trying to get to um, these verses where it starts talking about baptism. But go ahead. But let us acquire whether there be any temple of God. There is in the place where he himself undertakes to make and finish it. For it is written, and it shall come to pass, when the week is being accomplished, the temple of God shall be built gloriously in the name of the Lord. So now this week he's talking about is also described in this epistle of Barnabas. In, in about chapter 15, in the previous chapter, he talks about how this week is... 6,000 years or 7,000 years. Um, the deal is with the last thousand years, that's what we recognize as the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom age, the millennial age where for 1,000 years our father gets to rule the planet. I mean, it, it's easy to understand, I guess, even for you, that there's other forces that's actually running the world right now. You know, True. our father's not in charge of things you know there's other people in charge well that only lasts for uh six thousand years um and then in the seventh year we see here in chapter uh 15 you, you guys can pause the video and read if you wish but what we learn is that in the beginning of this seventh year is when this revs period is going to start and it's going to start for a thousand years and so that's what he's talking about down there let me see. I think that's all of the verses. I hope I got all of them. If anybody wanted to check those out. Well, we're going to continue on. Uh, 16 verse 7. I find then that there is a temple. How then shall it be built in the name of the Lord? Understand ye, before we believe on God, the abode of our hearts was corrupt and weak. A temple truly built by hands, for it was full of idolatry and was a house of demons because we did whatsoever was contrary to God. So this is where we were at before baptism, talking about how unclean we are. Our temples, which is our flesh, is full of idolatry. Um, it's full of demons uh, because of our idolatry and some of the other things we're doing. We're actually summoning demons instead of summoning our father to dwell in our abode. So that's you know what we're talking about here. Remission is what's going to help us get back where we're supposed to be. All right, so now let's go on to verse eight. But it shall be built in the name of the Lord. Give heed then that the temple of the Lord may be built gloriously. So it's, it's talking about up in seven. It's saying, okay, well, is there, are there, is there going to be a temple at all? I mean, you're saying here that there, we shouldn't have or even consider a brick and mortar temple, a real life temple. But the scripture talks about the third temple, the construction of the temple. So what's what's the deal? You know, is there going to be a temple is what's you know being talked about here in seven and eight. And so we see here in verse nine how this temple will be gloriously constructed. All right. Now, let's take this one a little slower than the rest of them. Matter of fact, we'll, we'll stop at the punctuation marks. A matter of fact, we'll stop at the periods. How? Understand ye. Again, talking about how this temple is going to be constructed. How will it be built? Okay, we find out it's not brick and mortar. So how, what is it and how is it going to be built? Okay, go ahead. By receiving the remission of our sins and hoping on the name, we became new, created afresh from the beginning. So listen to what it's saying okay. here. So by getting the remission of our sins, and hoping in the name. Those are two different things. You know, hoping in the name, of course, is the law. He is the word made flesh. He's the law recreated and walking around. So that's what it means to believe on the name. Not necessarily take it in vain and get you a big cross to put around your neck and, you know, what. No, he's actually talking about obedience to the law and the scripture when it says to believe in his name. Right. And so it's saying you have to do these things, believe in his name and then get the remission of sins. Well, in the New Testament, one of the things that we learn is that the remission of sins comes through the shedding of his blood, talking about our Messiah. And then we learn in Mark that the remission of the sins are actually tied to baptism. So what this is saying is that we get the remission of our sins at baptism. And then and then when we come back to the epistle of Barnabas, it's saying that the, that the temple will be constructed 
by receiving that remission of sins and hoping in the name. So once you hope in the name, understanding the covenant, following, doing what it says, and getting the remission of sins, which you get through baptism, it says you become new. You become new. Created afresh from the beginning. So like it was even before you was born by getting baptized. So that's what happened when you got in that water. This actually started you afresh as a fresh being. And that's why we're having this discussion is because now you want to actually remain clean. We're not going to talk about all of that in the video, you know, with the exception of, you know, talking about what verses that would cover the covenant. But in this one, let's just go on, you know, understanding where you're at right now. Wherefore God dwelleth truly in our habitation within us. So that's how he dwells within us. See, if we're defiled and unclean, he wants he can't really come in us because he's such a pure vessel, he can't be in a place that's tainted. So now that you've been baptized, you're no longer tainted and he can't actually move in. And that's what's gonna help give you the strength and the power and all the, the blessings and stuff that we receive from obedience to the script. So that's why it's necessary. That's why the temple will be constructed. First, we getting baptized, cleaning up our inner temple, and then he can move in and start to um, give us that inner worship center that you know was the plan from the beginning. So now he's going to tell us here. You see where it says how? Mm -hmm. So let's see what, what it says. How is this going to work? All right, go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you, but you just keep going. The word of his faith. The word of his faith. So once you become this vessel, then he's going to instill the word of his faith on the inside of you. So this is a necessary element to your inner temple. The calling of his promise. Letting you know what it is that you're doing all of this for. I mean, you see, it's not the most pleasant thing to be on this path. Well, there's a reason behind it, you know. And, and so once you understand that promise, it's got to give you the motivation to move forward. The wisdom of the ordinances. These are the, the laws and the rules. Not everybody will get the opportunity to read those rules. So what he's saying is, is that he will instill them into your newer vessel, into your clean vessel. The commandments of the teaching. Yeah, again, this is what our conscience is for. Our conscience is where we're supposed to receive this information. This is what they talk about when they talk about the uh, new covenant. Whereas now, we have to read this information in, in a book, black and white. Well, there's coming a transition, even through this baptism, that we will start to hear these commandments and this wisdom from the inside. And we won't necessarily need a book or we won't necessarily need the law when this time happens because we will get our information directly from the source. And that's what this is all about. We have to clean ourselves up in order to hear from this source. As long as we're unclean, as long as we're defiled, the connection is severed and we can't hear anything. Well, the first step is to go through this baptism and now you can start to hear from him. And you, know, you may have to get some classes on how he talks to us, you know, uh, intuition, dreams and our conscience. But you know, that's, that's what you'll do. As a beginner, you'll learn that stuff as you go. He himself prophesying in us. Yeah, so what this is, is kind of when the Holy Spirit takes over and starts speaking through us, right? This is what he's saying. So you'll be, one day you'll find yourself, as long as you stay clean, you'll find yourself speaking on divine things. And people will be looking at you like, how is it that he knows so much? Or how is it that he has this wisdom? Well, what it's saying here is that he is going to instill this in you and use your tongue as his vessel in order to communicate his message. But again, you have to stay clean. And when you dirty yourself up, you're going to defile that. And I say when, because that brings us to um, Passover and how the uh, Passover communion is kind of like a... Um, renewal of this remission but we'll talk about that in another video right and my point in in that is that we're trying to stay clean because we're sinful in nature we're never going to be perfect but that's where the messiah comes in he he actually helps us to to um um regain that purity every single year during passover but anyway let's go on he himself dwelling in us yeah, absolutely so now you have a companion Right now, you have somebody a, um, that's going to be walking with you at all times. You'll never be alone again as long as you stay in this pure state with this remission. You know, and this is why we keep coming back to this is because the baptism is what's gotten this ball rolling. 
Right. Right. Opening for us who had been in bondage unto death, the door of the temple. So that's talking about all of us and how we are slated for death because of our sin. That is what we get out of sin is death. And so because we were in a defiled state before our baptism, that was our destiny. We were all slated to die. But because of this baptism, we now have another chance, a renewed chance is what it's talking about here. And so the doors are now reopened. The doors are open and you can choose life. Baptism is the door. That's what the Messiah did for us. You know, he is the one who made this possible. If before him, we would have had to have the blood of sheep and the blood of lambs. Well, the Messiah comes in now and put his blood up. And all we have to do is take advantage of it through baptism and Passover. Like as a, like as a sacrifice. Yeah, he, he was sacrificed, right. And, and so we have to partake in the sacrifice. And we, not verbally, just saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, we actually have to be baptized. And then we have to keep the communion annually just like the feasts and you know just like the script says which is the mouth and giving us repentance leadeth us to the incorruptible temple so this door here is the mouth that he's talking about and what he's saying is that this is leading us to the incorruptible temple so in a nutshell this is what your whole baptism is about here wrapped up in that that's why you're doing this that's why you did the baptism now it's up to you to keep yourself clean. And we'll talk about those in other videos as we get into more detail. Like, for instance, the covenant, which is um, four chapters from Exodus, chapter 20, chapter 21, 22, and chapter 23. That will be necessary to keep you purified. That is the law. That's the purpose of our Messiah. He was the law made flesh. He was the covenant made flesh. So you have to go read that and understand it in order so you know when you're tempted to break a commandment and when you're not in other words you'll know those pitfalls and what's getting you in trouble and what ain't like we were talking earlier when it comes to the video games it's like a new video game that you're in now where you have full strength and full power but there are pitfalls in this game that you don't know about simply because you haven't read the script you haven't read the covenant there are pitfalls and things that you would think are normal and natural but when you touch them or simply be around them, they're going to drain your yeah, energy. Yeah, you're going to lose the power. Exactly. And so, so you'll find out some of those pitfalls in the book of the covenant. You'll also find some of them in the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And then you have the commands of the shepherd of Hermas. Those also are things where that we need to learn, you know, how to deal with anger, uh, selfishness and patience and different things. These are all virtues that we're learning from this to know how to act correctly here, how to love our father with all of our heart and how to love our brother as ourselves. So we're reading all of those scriptures in order to 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 learn that, including the third testament of the Bible. We'll talk about uh, 16 and 17, but I'm not sure if we're going to talk about 15 or 18 because I'm sure it's three chapters involved. But we'll talk about that in the comment section of this video as we get ready to talk about how we're going to complete this series. I think it could be something like a vacation Bible study or something like that. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. All right. So we'll put together an agenda or a schedule or something like that, a curriculum, and then we'll just keep it going. We'll come back and we'll talk about the covenant and some of these other things, including like Revelation and Enoch. Gotcha. All right, so we'll see you in a future video, guys. If you got anything out of this video, please hit the like button. Um, if you didn't, hit the dislike button. But if you have any comments or anything or any encouragements for our, our Jamaican food, just leave them below, and we'll see you down there. Peace out, guys. Salawama. That was amazing.